Today we're going to show you how to do a day trip of about 300 miles in an inefficient EV and we're starting off wrong right away. Let's get going. So we have to head to a graduation um, and it's just going to be the three of us, the girls, well, we have Oliver, but we got to drop him off at a birthday party. And yeah, so we have to drive about 300 miles. And what we're starting off with is about 80%. And that's not what you want to do in a day trip. You should be at 100%, but we had to do a bunch of running around today. It should be fine if that happens or some chargers on the way. Normally on this road trip, which is Battle Creek, Nebraska from Lincoln, Nebraska, um, there are only slower chargers, 50 kilowatt chargers. But I just looked like as of a couple days ago and there's an actual Autel charger that's supposed to get over 200 kilowatts in Norfolk. So we should be good with that one, but nobody is charged on it from what I can tell. So we're going to have to see if it actually works and all of the adventures and fun that go along with that. Maybe I'll pass the phone to the girls at some point and they'll kind of explain what they do on road trips and we'll just go from there. Say bye to Oliver. So I talked about earlier how this is a really inefficient vehicle. This is the 2023 Hummer EV, and it is the most inefficient electric vehicle out there. Currently, we are getting 1.4 miles per kilowatt hour. That is not very good. We're going highway speed, 75 miles an hour. Luckily, this vehicle has the largest usable battery pack at 213 kilowatt hours. When you're doing a day trip like that, you, you definitely should charge to 100%, really no matter what vehicle you have. Even on this trip, there are no Tesla superchargers. There's only public chargers. So even if you had a Tesla that doesn't get over that 300 miles, you know, on highway use, then you still would have to charge on public chargers. And like I said before, that normally there's only uh, 50 kilowatt chargers, which with this vehicle, I would definitely consider slow, that a slow charger because if it was at zero to charge to 100%, it would take four hours. Um, with a Tesla or something a lot more efficient, like a Mach-E or an Ionic 5 or something like that, you know, it, it wouldn't take too terribly long because those are a lot more um, efficient vehicles. But we're kind of lucky in a sense, and that's probably why I did it. We have this Autel charger. And if you have watched any of our videos before, we love our home Autel charger. So it'll be very exciting for me to test out this higher fast charger that they have. It's not your really big boy charger like your electrify america your ev goes where you can get 350 kilowatts but you should be able to get that 240 kilowatts and that's also kind of why i wanted to drive the hummer ev too is because we should be able to hit those peaks i don't really know it's on about those chargers i know kyle connor uh, did a video with um, i believe it was the president of autel and he talked about that charger. Uh, if I remember, I'll link that in the description below. And I'll also link our home charger down in the description too. So you guys can check that out. Because uh, we do love that one. Yeah, I'm excited for this trip. I'll show you some things that I love about the Hummer EV2. As far as road tripping, I don't have that many miles on it. We have about 900 miles on it currently. And, you know, the biggest thing I don't, like about it is such a large battery pack and it's uh inefficient it's just a very inefficient vehicle and so you know <laughs> when you're charging it, it takes a while for it to charge up when you're 
traveling to places that we do that don't have those big boy chargers, those 350 kilowatt chargers. So that's what I don't like about this vehicle. Um, and so, but there's plenty to love about this vehicle. So I'll tell you all about it. The ride on this thing is the smoothest I've ever felt. Kennedy's dancing back there. That's how you entertain yourself on two and a half hours. Maddie said that the vehicle is obnoxious because of how big the tires are and how big it is. I do like that too because it makes the ride really smooth. It has plenty of space in here. They utilize this space fairly well inside and I, I enjoy it. Um, it is hard for me to say that I enjoy it because it's such an inefficient vehicle, but we've taken it through, what, an ATM drive through earlier? And that is a bit scary because, yeah, you, you like have barely any space on each side. I should have videoed it. It was like an inch curb to curb as you were going through the ATM drive through I don't know. That makes me nervous, but all right. Katie's calling. We better answer. Okay, so here we are on a two-lane highway. This is what I'm talking about with Super Cruise working. I never had this work with Blue Cruise, um, and it definitely doesn't work in the Rivian. And, yeah, it works really well on two lanes as well. The interesting thing is when you come up to bigger intersections, it'll do this with the uh, four lane, the divided highways too. But when you come up to a bigger intersection or even a light, it will kick you out of Super Cruise. It'll tell you it's unavailable. And then it will allow you to re-engage once you get past that intersection. If I come up to one, I'll show you what it does. Um, but yeah. It's obviously not going to pass anybody on this highway. I have to do that manually. But, yeah, look at the efficiency. 1.3 miles per kilowatt hour. That's so bad. All right, so I missed it. It kicked us out of Super Cruise. And then it should allow us to re-engage it coming up here. So... What it'll do is the light will come on right there. I'm going to have to move this seat there. It's kind of grayed out there. It looks like a wheel. Compress it. Turns blue. Now it's green. Means it's engaged. And we're back on Super Cruise. Oh, yeah. Found another con. All the bug guts. I just took this off two, three days ago. And... I don't know if it's just how this windshield is where it goes straight up and down basically or if it's just increased bugs right now but gross it just yeah is there some jeep owners out there it seems like it's probably a similar problem i don't know we're gonna stop up here i'll clean the windshield off and then i'll show you how fast the bugs accumulate it's crazy. Alright, so we cleaned it pretty good. I don't know if you can see it. Hey, not as many as there was. Okay, so I think we got like 60 more miles to go. We'll see how many more are on there. Here's the windshield. We just got back on the road. Terrible job washing it off, but mostly gone. And we have 70 more miles to go. So when we get there, or right before we get there, we'll see how many bugs are on there. Already one right there. Might be two. <laughs> I'm going to show you now how what I do on a car ride. So I just made this 
cool little bracelet out of pearls and clay beads. And I used some just elastic cord. And I just this a wrap all the way around because that like to have it like where people aren't going to see it. I find that wasteful sometimes. So I just like to have this. I think it's a really pretty bracelet. And then I brought this little fun magic kit. I haven't done it yet, but I think I might do it soon. It's called Marvin's Eye Magic, and it's just like a little like magic kit that you use your phone to do. And then I also brought some more bracelet making stuff, like some rainbow loom. I just have a little loom. I think I have, no, I sadly didn't bring my happy loom, but I have some C-clips. And just all sorts of rubber bands. I think I'm going to make a matching one for this one out of Rainbow Loom. I like to do that a lot. And yeah, really that's what I like to do on car rides, especially long ones. Instead of just doing one singular thing, I like to bring at least two to three things to do. So I think bracelet making has been one of my bigger things right now since I haven't done the Marvin's Eye Magic, but I think I'm going to do that, and I might show you some of the cool tricks I can do once I've got it nailed. So, what I do on car rides is sometimes I do some of Trinity's bracelets, and um, to, play with, to play with putty sometimes, and also what I like doing is I sometimes bring my American Journals, and I also like reading or uh, doing a book. So I got this from one of my dances and it was one of our props and we got to keep it because we didn't really have any other use for it. And we were going to, and we're going to make a book out of it. So I'm trying to think of things to write into it. I can't really right now because I would need some help from the other girls that were in the dance because I don't want to fill it up with all mine. But and it was just really, and that's what I do. And my favorite thing is like reading or hanging out with my American Girl dolls. And it is really fun. So that's what I do on car rides. Okay, it has been 30 miles. And look at how many bugs are already on there. What? It has to be that the windshield is so vertical, just like a stop sign going down the road doing 70 miles an hour. But the bugs aren't stopping. Crazy. We got about 10 more miles to go before we get there and we are currently doing 1.2 miles per kilowatt hour and we roughly have about 32% state of charge. This thing is so inefficient, so bad. <laughs> so we are definitely going to have to go into Norfolk from Battle Creek and charge. So that'll take a little extra time, but I'm kind of excited about that anyways. I want to try out that Autel charger and see how that thing goes. It doesn't show up on anything but the Autel app. On PlugShare, it shows that it's under construction, but the Autel app actually shows that it's online. So I hope it's online, or we're going to be sitting at a 50 kilowatt charger for a little bit longer than I would like to, and I don't get to try out a new charger that I've never done before. So. But we're gonna go enjoy family time for an hour or two, and I'm sure we'll be given some rides in this crazy thing. A lot of the people here haven't seen it yet. All right, so we just left the graduation party. We have about nine miles to go to Norfolk, Fork, uh, Nebraska, and we are preconditioning the vehicle since we cannot put it in the navigation and have the car automatically precondition it. The nice thing about this vehicle is you can go into the energy app 
and precondition it. It will not have enough time to precondition it all the way. The app says it could take up to an hour. I don't honestly know how long that takes, but um, you know, we'll, we'll be there in about 15 minutes. Um, but anyways, we will condition it as much as possible and then hook it up and see how it goes. Hopefully the charger works to be honest. All right, so it's legitimately here. It's kind of on the back side. They have a couple of them sitting here. That's a level two one. And then you have the bigger boy charger. You got Buffalo Wild Wings over here too. So I'm not sure if that's everywhere, but around here, that's pretty good food. You got Culver's across the street. I'm pretty sure there's a Sonic over there too. But yeah, this is actually a pretty good spot. They have it super ghettoed out with a piece of cardboard that says use the Autel app or scan the QR code to charge. <laughs> Maybe they'll get a better thing. But anyways, uh, looks like it's just CCS charger. And I'm gonna get into the app. Okay kind of hard to go in there but I'm gonna get in the app and get this thing going and see what happens yeah so this is nice it's just like a, a little touch screen so I don't know what this stuff does takes you home whoa connection fee costs five dollars <laughs> and then it's 30 cents a kilowatt hour so it probably even out okay for this big of a vehicle, but I don't know. All right, so I'm gonna plug her in. So awkward. Heard a huge clunk. <laughs> know what that was? Ah, so. I heard it beep on the Hummer, that means it's charging. Okay, so obviously this is not 240 kilowatts. They need to make that change. So I just see this panel, this little thing here that says 60 kilowatts and that's all it's going up to. So wah, 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 well that's boring. I don't even know what to, think it's too bad because they have it labeled as 240 kilowatts and it's not all right so it's a successful charge but it is definitely not 240 kilowatts so we will be here a bit longer than i thought i will make note of that on plug share so everybody actually knows this is not 240 kilowatts i'm also going to write autel a note so they can actually change that too can't be promising things that do not uh, actually uh, come through. I, that's frustrating. That's it. You know, it is what it is, I guess. I don't even know what to say. It it's, seems to be everywhere in public charging right now. You just get let down. I, I mean, I'm glad that it's working, but the fact that it's 60 kilowatts, I mean, that's what? a fourth of what it says so we'll be here four times longer than we uh think and so i don't know frustrating but i guess what do you do well we are done we went and grabbed a bite to eat at culver's me and the girls and we're at 61 percent uh where is it yeah 61 percent been here for an hour and 15 minutes which i thought it was going to be about 15 to 20 minutes we're about five percent more than we really need to make sure and get back home um we have about 140 
50 miles to get back home. So we have plenty. Cost 27 point, or 27. Cost $27 and 68 cents. We got 76 kilowatt hours. I will figure that out. How much that costs and be right back. Actually, let's just unplug it. So, guys, stop it from here. So I gotta, I'm gonna stop it in the car. See if I can. Okay, I guess I have to stop it inside the app. So I'll be back. So there you have it. You have to stop it within the app. So 2814 is what it charged me. Didn't have any idle fees, no tax. Um, 30 cents per kilowatt, so 2314, which I didn't think the state of Nebraska let you charge per kilowatt hour, but whatever. Uh, I guess there's tax there. So 2814, I'll run the numbers and tell you how much per kilowatt hour that is. Maybe some of you are smarter than me and already know, but seems like it's a little over 30 cents, but I'll figure it out. Get her unplugged. Well, it was 37 cents per kilowatt hour. So there you have it. We got a charge, but which I guess, let's go back to that. 37 cents per kilowatt hour. That's not too bad. I think that kind of is in line with what Electrify America charges, but you are getting a faster charge with that. So are going to be headed back. Like I said, I think we have about 130, 140 miles to go. So I'm going to let the video end here. So say bye girls. Yeah, so, yep, if you want to follow along any more adventures, just hit the subscribe button. But thanks for coming along for this, and we'll see you on the next one.